Hey, yo, what's up? You know what it is? It's the one in the alley, the triple, the G-O-D. I'd like to welcome you guys back to another in style, man, the triple, the guy speaks something. Yo, My Little Pony Friendship is Magic Season 7, Episode Number 20, A Health of Information. I will say this. This episode hit all the points that it should have. It gave you more Zakora. It gave you a more that you should follow, listen to, and follow through on. And it did the thing that I have been appreciating that this whole season has done by expanding the world of Equestria, by giving you more ponies and more lore and more backstory and more history about where ponies come from and how that affects the world as a whole. I'm like, this episode was that. Is that for the shine Zakora? Go to a pond and they go find crisscross moss and Zakora unfortunately comes down with swamp fever and this leads Fluttershy to do some things that are uncharacteristic to her by not taking care of herself even though she was doing it for what was perceived for the right reasons to make sure that she felt that Zakora getting swamp fever was her fault so she worked herself ragged she worked twilight ragged to a degree and did all of this and within that she was able to find the information he was looking for but you could see the toll it was slowly taking on her is that this episode did a great Great job of setting up not only Mage Meadowbrook by giving us that lore and that history about what technically is the Bayou, with it, which is all that knowledge stuff within Equestria and giving you cattail to really bring it all in and everything. I thought it was a, a great thing that, yeah, even though at the very end of the episode, the show hands you the moral. Don't work yourself ragged. You can't take care of nobody else if you ain't taking care of yourself properly. I'm like, I just, again, like I said, I appreciate every every note that the show was trying to hit this episode, it did. It did it in a way that wasn't too heavy-handed because, yes, as someone who watches this show and unless who watches other shows of this nature that try to bring morals to light that you can see the moral coming from a mile away. But how the show ultimately presents the moral brings this episode to a conclusion where you learn everything, where everything is A-OK, and you get a laugh or two, it was wonderful. It's like, I just love the interactions that Fluttershy was having in this weird I haven't slept in day state with both Twilight and Cattell and even the and even the Zap So you know it's like it was a lot of all that coming over. But it's like the thing to take away from this is that this is more a Fluttershy growing as a character. Like, I was, when she finally got her animal sanctuary, I was the one screaming, you go girl. This is another episode where one of my favorite characters in this show is getting a you go girl moment because she was sitting up here pushing it to the absolute limit. And I'm like, Fluttershy even got so desperate to bring out the stare. It didn't work, though. But it showed how willing she was going to go hard for her people. And I, as someone who loved that character and respects that side of the character, it was great to see that character, to even to even turn it on his head to see that there has to be a balance between A and B. And if there is none, bad things happen. I'm like... Fluttershy learned a lot. I'm like, even Zakora to a degree learned a lot because we know Zakora as somebody who got the who got the hook up for all the elixirs for everything you need. And it was one thing she couldn't solve because she was sick. So we gave Fluttershy a chance to shine. It's like now nah, anybody who it's like and then understanding that we now have a cure for swamp fever in the world is that it makes the whole world in general a better place because the problem was solved. And it was solved in a way, like I said, that all the notes were hit. Because again, let me just repeat this one more time for just for, for the review's sake. This show presented a problem. It was solved. Within solving that problem, you were able to expand on these characters and this world and give you a moral and all of it in a way that makes sense. That I said heavy handed earlier. But I don't think the moral is as heavy handed as I think about it now. Simply because. Simply because. You saw it. 
The show just needed to explain it to you so that we can put an exclamation point on the sentence. The show didn't have to take its time out to do that, but it did. Simply put, it didn't have to take the time out to explain to you that, yeah, maybe if you're sitting up here going hard, that maybe a couple hours of sleep, because what does sleep do for you? Sleep helps regulate you, your body, your body chemistry. For all my young folks, you grow in your sleep. You grow because your body has time to relax and help you grow and help you expand. Sleep's important. I should take my own advice. I won't, but I should. All in all, it's a great, wonderful episode. I'm like another episode again because I applaud it simply because of the world building. This season has been more world building than any of the previous six seasons. Is that world building was very rare, but it seems that the world building and even in an extension, more importantly, the building of the lore of Equestria has been front and center. Without it being this thing that is taking over the show. And I got to commend the show for doing that. But yo, that's going to wrap this one up for me. Yeah, you know, I got a little bit on the back burner. So be with me. Be easy. We're going to get it taken care of and get it all in. Let's turn this into a video, why don't we? You know who I am. I'm, of course, the one and the only, the triple, the who, G. O-D. And I'd like to thank you for joining me for another installment of Triple the Guy Speak Show. And with that being said, I'll holler at you guys next time, man. Peace out! <laughs>